So what is going on guys? Welcome to some Garden Warfare here today on my channel. Today we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane because not only is Garden Warfare an incredible game, six years to the day this game was released on Xbox One. It's the game which blew up my channel, it's a game which holds a very special place in a lot of people's childhoods, a lot of people's favourite game lists, and it was the first of many Plants vs Zombies shooter games. Now, not only are we gonna be jumping into memory lane and playing Garden Warfare, I'm actually gonna be talking about my first experience playing this game because even though it was six years ago, I actually remember the first time loading the game up. I remember listening to that iconic Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare music, which sounded absolutely amazing. I think I actually remember probably like boogie into it a little bit as well. I just remember I was sat in my bed, I loaded the game up, and the first thing I did was I jumped straight into some Garden Ops on Port Scallywag. And I know it's crazy that I remember this when it was six years ago, but I remember playing Port Scallywag, going to the garden on the left, and I remember shooting a zombie and his head popping off. I was a pea shooter, his head popped off, and that was hilarious to me. I thought, this is brilliant. And that is my first memory that I have of Garden Warfare, which is mind-blowing that I can still remember it to this day. Not only was my first ever game on Port Scallywag, my first ever Plants vs Zombies video was based around Port Scallywag as well. I was explaining Boss Hunt. iLogix HD was in the video as well, demonstrating uh, with me what a Boss Hunt was. So we are going to be taking a trip down memory lane. We're going to be jumping into my first ever experience that I had of Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. We're going to be going into Port Scallywag at the garden at the very top on the left. And we're going to be playing some Garden Ops like it was my very first time. If you guys did play Garden Warfare, let me know your first experience experiences down in the comments down below and hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video okay then so here we are on the menu let's jump into some garden ops here let's create a match and let's go on to port scallywag i'm not going to go into crazy because i can't see myself doing that first time round. i was probably only on normal so we're going to stick with normal. We're going to put it on invite only. And then, of course, we are going to go to port Scallywag. What else do we have on here? Dual Junction, Dual Junction Night, Crash Course, Garden Center. That was obviously Aqua Center in Garden Warfare 2. Chomp Town. This map was brought in the first ever DLC for Garden Warfare, which was called Variety Gar Garden Variety Pack. We have Suburban Flats. There's a remake of that in Battle for Neighborville. Zomboss Estate. And, of course, random as well. So, let's go into Port Scallywag and let's give this a go. There's some classic maps on the original Garden Warfare. Just going back to look at all the names as well. Like, it's pretty cool. So, we have 10 waves of Garden Ops in Garden Warfare 1. We'll have some special waves and it should be awesome. But I find it crazy that the first ever time I played Plants vs. Zombies, I still remember it in my head. I think because this game is so special and so unique... That first memory I have of Plants vs. Zombies has just been stuck in my brain that I just can't forget it. I just remember spawning into the game as a pea shooter like this. And then I headed over to the objective at the very top. Spawned in the garden. And I just remember shooting the first ever brown coat that was in the game. And his head popped off. And I thought that was absolutely hilarious. You know, there's no blood in the game. There's no gore or anything like that. But just... His head popping off at the start of the game was brilliant. So let's uh, let's use our hyper to get over here just a little bit quicker. Of course, you guys probably remember this if you play Garden Warfare 1. We should have a couple of potted plants that'll appear here. We should have some over there as well. We have like the tombstone waves and everything. So let's go plant the garden, Crazy Dave. And let's go pot some, plant some stuff down. Now, obviously, all of this wasn't available when the game first came out. Uh, we didn't have the bamboo shoot, we didn't have the fire pee, the ice pee, the laser pee. We didn't have any of these. I think the, we only had up to the doom shroom. And I probably didn't have many of those. I probably only had like a couple of pea cannons and a couple of repeaters and gatling peas. So maybe we should only use those potted plants. Yeah, I could probably go back onto my Xbox list and maybe even see 
the achievements of when I unlocked something, because I probably unlocked something in the first game. But let's go throw a couple more of these down. There we go. I don't think I had many things else. Maybe I had like a skirmish room or something as well. We have, of course, the pirate zombies. I don't think the pirate zombies were originally in the game as well. I think these were added a little bit later on as well. So even though we're experiencing a couple of pirate zombies now, I don't believe these were in the initial game. These were just normal brown cores. And of course, then they added the pirates into a DLC later on, where they added the, uh, the map pirate zombies and the barrel zombies and... They added them as, like, reskins, but they weren't originally in the game. Even though this is a pirate-themed map. And perfect wave. Not a bad start. I'm not gonna lie. Even though we are only on normal difficulty, it's still nice to get a perfect wave. But, yeah, if you guys are watching this video and you guys are trying to take a trip down memory lane with me, let me know what your favourite or first experience was of the game. Like, what was the first character you unlocked in the game as well? I think the first character I unlocked was uh, Tick Trooper. I remember going into multiplayer. I had no idea that character variants were a thing. I honestly just thought it was just the original four characters for the plants and four for the zombies. Had no idea variants were a thing. And then I remember experiencing later on, once you got your character to, like, level 10... You got another special character unlocked. And I just remember waiting to get that character and then finding out what that character was and how special it was. I'm trying to think of what the special characters were for each class now. For the plants, who was it? Was it the Agent P? I think it might have been the Agent P for the Pea Shooter. I think it was Metal Petal for the Sunflower. For the Cactus, it was... What was the special one for the Cactus? I, I, you know, I honestly can't think. Camel Cactus, was it was for the cactus. And then for the Chomper, it was Toxic Chomper, I believe. Don't hold me to that one. And then for the Zombies, I think it was the... For the Foot Soldiers, it was the Camel Ranger. For the Engineer, I think it was the Painter. No, 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 it was the Welder. For the Scientist, it was the Chemist. And for the All-Stars, I think it was... Uh, I, I honestly can't remember all the All-Stars. Like, one of the Hockey Star, I think it was? I honestly can't remember. But they, they obviously had the special variants that you could only get for promoting a character to level 10. And once you got that character unlocked, it was it was so good. Oh, there's a teleporter here. Hold on a minute. Let's destroy this dude. Let's destroy the teleporter. Of course, if you guys haven't played Garden Warfare 1 or Garden Warfare 2... There were teleporters in the game, and that was one of the engineer's unique features if you was playing Turf Takeover or Gardens and Graveyards. The engineer could build a teleporter, which would allow the zombies to teleport a little bit quicker to the objective in Turf Takeover. Now, of course, in Garden Warfare 2, the Rose was able to do that as well, but in Garden Warfare 1, there was only the zombies attacking. The plants never attacked the objectives. It was always the plants defending and the zombies attacking, because, of course, we're in suburbia. And it's the zombies trying to attack the plants. So it didn't make sense for the plants to be attacking. But in Garden Warfare 2, when it was Zomberbia, that makes more sense. Because the plants are trying to regain control. And the zombies are trying to uh, either capture more or regain control of what had been taken from them. But we have the boss slots. We have more zombies. We have Gargantua and more zombies as well. There's a couple of bosses that are not in Garden Warfare 1 as well. Of course, we don't have the plants at all so there's no plants in uh, no plant bosses in this game whatsoever as far as the zombies go we don't have uh gargantua prime we don't have the house zombies uh, there's a flight pirate zombie right there as well uh what new zombies did we get as well we don't have is there any new zombies from garden warfare 2 that was added i honestly can't even think to be honest uh, there's no Zen Sensei in this game. I think when the game originally came up, I don't think we had the Disco Zombie either. No, we did have the Disco Zombie, sorry. We didn't have Baron Von Bats uh, straight away. Baron Von Bats only came in later on. But uh, we got to watch out for this guy because I'm actually being wrecked by this Gargantua. No idea how much health he's got. Watch out for the Imp. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. Let's just let's just hide behind a little turret over here. Go on, Gat go on, little Gatlins. Go on, take him down. I saw a 20 damage there. Yeah, there you go, potty plant. Taking down the Gargantua. That's what we like to see. I probably died a few times, if I'm not going to lie. Uh, first time I played this. Probably died a few times, but it's fine. Let's hopefully not die at all. 
But I just remember playing this and just seeing the zombies' heads just pop up was absolutely brilliant. Why did I just heal? That was weird. I think I was already full health, wasn't I? Maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. Right, let's put another scurdy shroom down here. Uh, another repeater down. Another gatling, sorry, down as well. We're not going to be using all of the other potted plants that were a little bit more rare because I probably wouldn't have got them unlocked in the game. And now we're coming across the scientists. I love a good scientist in Garden Warfare 2 uh, and Garden Warfare 1. It's a shame that the scientist just... I don't know, he's just been changed so much in Battle for Neighborville. It just... I don't enjoy the scientist as much as I used to. But uh, I love the, the, the scientist in this game. The scientist was amazing. Absolutely loved them. Even just the regular scientist was so powerful. I guess I, I wasn't really a huge fan of maybe like Dr. Toxic or the physicist or something like that in Garden Warfare 1. I mostly just played Super Commando and Chemist and you know all the overpowered characters? What what made you get like a lot of vanquishes? Yeah, it just kind of stick to those characters. <laughs> but uh, there's one character which I played a lot in Garden Warfare 1, which you didn't really see a lot of people playing. And that was the Jade Cactus. Didn't really see a lot of people playing as the Jade Cactus, but I thought the Jade Cactus was one of the best characters in the game. Pretty decent rate of fire, had extra health as well, and on top of that, you had like the little splash damage as well. So if you hit a plant, uh, if you hit a zombie near the feet, it would detonate if you miss them. Uh, but also it would kind of like do a little explosion and damage other zombies around, which was quite a nice little feature to have. Come on, engineer, where are you coming? Where are you going? Take you down. There we go. Of course, the engineer is a little bit skinnier in this game. Obviously, since Battle for Naperville, the engineer decided to eat a few cakes. You know, eat a few brains, put on a bit of weight on his time between Zomberbia and Battle for Naperville. But uh, we're not judging. We're not, we don't judge people over here. You know, we'll let, we'll, let, we'll let zombies do what those zombies want to do. You know, the uh, foot soldier decided to go for fishing in Battle for Naperville and Garawapa 2 as well, because I believe that they have a, a fishnet on the helmet or something like that. But uh, we're judging. They can do what they want. That's absolutely fine. Uh, let's put another repeater down here. Okay, now we have a special wave, which you don't see in Battle for Naperville. Basically, we've got to go around and destroy all these vases. If we destroy all these vases within a certain time limit, then we will get, like, a bonus bonus experience uh, like a, a coin bonus is what we would get do you mind it punt there we go and of course when you break a couple of verses you get a bit of extra time let's go take this coffin zombie down there we go right then so how many more verses have we got we've only got two more sets to go so we got plenty of time let's go destroy these looks like this one's got lots of zombies on it come on mr scientist there we go. Is that a mall now? I think that's the mall. And then the final bases. Of course, these are in Ganwapo 2 as well, but there's no special waves in Battle for Neighborville, which is a shame. So hopefully when we get like phase three or something, we will uh, we'll get them in phase three or something. I'd like some, some special waves like this. And I'd also like to get myself some um, some more waves up to like 10 or something. Even if we have just waves going up to 10, that would be nice. But as you can see, in Garden Warfare 1, we had three gardens to choose from. We had this garden, we had a garden just on the ship here, and then one on the other side past the uh, castle gate there as well. And occasionally, there was enchanted gardens, so you'd uh, you'd use... What would you use for the enchanted garden? I think you'd use the skip star challenge stars or something like that. Unless that was only Garden Warfare 2, I honestly can't remember. You'd use like some currency or some coins or something like that to be able to uh, use an enchanted garden. Which that enchanted garden would then uh, give you coin bonuses at the end of every single round. Let's go use a self revive as well. We can use three per game. Goddamn pesky all stars. I forgot you don't naturally regenerate to full health in this. You only go up to half health. So I've got to be cautious here. It's not the same as in Garden Warfare 2 where you can just run away and naturally heal to full health. Let's go get these pirate zombies though because they're taking down my garden. Crazy Dave ain't going to be happy. we take the all star down then? I think we did. There's someone behind me. Here's the barrels on me. Got all barrels on me. Let's take you down though. Come on. There we go. 
And this is the final zombie. I was going to say then, is it the final zombie? Well, there we go. Alright, let's put a three mo few more potted plants down. Probably had more pea shoes than anything, so let's go throw a couple of those down as well. Pea cannon, sorry. There we go. Look at these dudes. They're so cute. I love them. And here be Zomboss slots again. Yeti! Give us a Super Yeti wave. No! I wanted a Super Yeti wave. I wanted to hear the music. I would have loved to have heard the Super Yeti wave music. There he is. Taking him down. No, get back here. Get back here. Come on. Oh. oh no. Oh yeah, you get slowed down as well, of course. Hold on. No! Are you joking me? You you headbutt slammed it once and you took down my flower? I was gonna use that flower. The Yeti was one of the biggest threats, by the way, in this game. Can I just say that right now? The Yeti was one of the most difficult bosses to take out. And he's gone. <laughs> I mean we are only on normal difficulty, so it's not gonna be as difficult. But the Super Yeti waves were pretty crazy. What was the lifesavers? If he was almost going to die, if he was almost going to lose the garden, and you ended up getting a Super Disco wave, that was like the biggest lifesaver you could have possibly had, because the uh, Super Disco zombie wave that you would get would turn every zombie like these into dancing zombies that move really, really slow. So you had a really good chance to be able to take them out before they got to the garden. And then, of course, the Disco zombies aren't really a big threat. You can kind of like hide when they go to shoot you so like when they're like that they'll do a spin round you can just hide behind something so they don't really do too much damage to you the only threat was when they decided to start spinning around like that that's when they became a bit of a threat you can't damage them they could knock you back they can deal damage but they weren't really that big of a threat and then obviously once they've finished spinning you can take them down easy as pie but yeah, the Yeti zombies were like the biggest threat. Super Disco zombie waves, the easiest things going. You'd have all the zombies dancing really slowly, and it was great. But um, of course, Battle for Neighborville doesn't have this feature. Once you do finish all the waves in Battle for Neighborville, that's the end of it. We're not done yet. We've got to get to a landing zone. I mean, we've got to survive in this landing zone for 1 minute 40 seconds. If we don't do that, then we don't get away. So we've got to get away, and we've got to stay within this landing zone. You can put one potted plant down as well. The question is, though, what do you put down to try and help yourself? I typically go for, uh, I'll go for a heal flower or something like that. I find a heal flower very useful, because it can definitely save your life. It can give you a, a big boost of health when you need it. And, of course, if you can save at least one team retry for the final wave, you can kind of, like cheat your way to escaping basically what you do is you purposely want to go down with like 10 seconds remaining and then when there's like a second left you will activate your your self revive and then you will no 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 throw out some heals throw out some heals for me once you activate your self revive with like a second to go you will revive yourself and then you will be guaranteed to survive which is a cheaty way to do it but it's a way to do it nonetheless but we're not really under too much threat at the moment. We are only on normal difficulty, but you do actually start getting gargantuas coming your way and stuff, which is obviously not a good thing. I think I actually just heard him spawn then, actually. I think he spawned on the ship. Where is he? There he is. How are you doing, Mr. Gargantua? No, I'm just going to run this way. We've only got a few seconds remaining. Here comes Crazy Dave in Penny. Come on, Penny, save me. Save me, Penny. And boom, we escaped. So, that is God of War for one for many people that may have not actually played it before. That was the first ever game I played of Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Port Scallywag on that objective garden. There wasn't the pirate zombies, but it was that map, that location, six years ago to the day which is absolutely crazy. Let me know your first memory of Garden Warfare in the comments down below. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do drop a like. But thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I will catch you all 
in another video.